Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now the Home Secretary has made her first major intervention in the EU referendum debate. She was on Andrew Marr this morning, speaking up for Remain. She was asked how immigration could be controlled if we stay inside the European Union. Nobody who's heard me over the last few years can doubt that I think that we need to control immigration, and I think immigration is too high. But controlling immigration is hard, and it's hard whether we're inside the EU uh, or outside the EU. It's hard dealing with EU migration or uh, migration from outside the EU. Harder and to deal if we're still inside. Immigration is going to carry on rising very sharply if we stay inside the EU, isn't it? Well, the thing about immigration is that actually it's affected by many different features. That's why you can never, as a government, say we're going to change this one rule and suddenly the, the result is going mm. to be what we want. You have constantly to be working at it, which is exactly what we're yeah. doing. So the Home Secretary, having trouble giving quite a clear-cut answer there, the, the Leave campaign thinks immigration is probably its strongest card. Why is it not making more of it, Isabel? Well, I think it's, whilst it's a strong card within a certain group of the electorate, it also backfires with another one. Mm. And that has gone to the heart of a lot of the disagreement that has been all the way through the last few months between the rival Brexit camps. One side of those camps thinks that they should go very hard on immigration. They think that that's an absolute banker for them. The other group say, actually, this deters as many people from our case as it does attract. So there's a real tension there, and I think that's not been resolved. And that may be the issue. My understanding is that some of their, by them I mean the leave, the polling shows that immigration really resonates with those who've already made up their mind to leave. But for those who are still not sure, it doesn't get them to come on board. Yes, I mean, the leaders of Vote Leave, that's the group that now has got the official designation, have been absolutely clear from the moment they set up shop, i.e. way before they got the official designation from the Electoral Commission, that yes, they should talk about immigration, but if they defined their campaign on immigration, they would lose. It is as simple as that, because you are simply just talking to between 20 to 30 percent of the electorate, as you say, um, who have already made up their minds. And Vote Leave, Matthew Elliott, the chief executive of Vote Leave, has been clear all along their campaign has got to be defined on the economy, it's got to be defined on security, and they have got to show that their option is the safest option on those, Brexit, and that staying inside the EU is, is the risky one. So yes, they've got out headlines today saying the Home Secretary has admitted that we can't have full control of our borders, but you watch them, they'll be moving back to Obama, they'll be moving back to the economy, because that is the area from which they have only, uh, only have a chance of winning. The consensus view seems to be that the week just gone was a bad week for leave with the Treasury report first and then with Mr Obama's intervention. What should they do now? What will they do now? I think they need to make some impact with something quite spectacular, it's quite something different. Uh, you just feel they've run out of momentum. They had a terrific start when the, the referendum was called because of these cabinet defections, huge, huge names like Michael Gove, Boris Johnson, and that then seemed to be it. And every week, the, the Remain campaign have gridded this like a you know, Linton Crosby style general election campaign. They've got a big report here, Obama there, and they're totally owning the agenda. Um, which slightly begs the question why put out Theresa May today, the immigration person above all from the government? Why would you want to slip that in? Maybe because they think Obama, the, 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 the bow wave of Obama coverage will cover that up. So, I think Leave have to really concentrate on immigration now. Um, fine, you can keep on fighting on the economy and security You don't security think that puts France. people off as well? It brings people on board, but it puts people well, off. It, it may well put people off, but look, it is their strongest suit. Mm. Uh, and they do have a huge amount of support on what they are saying about immigration across the country. You've got to, you know, if, if, if you've got one big weapon, you've got to keep on firing it. Were you surprised that Dominic Rabb didn't just rule out the idea of visas? I was a bit surprised, actually. I'm not sure how that's going to go down amongst the uh, Leave campaigners. Yeah. But to, to go back, and, and I think it will be picked up that, I'm sure that the Remain camp will, will run with that. 
Um, but just, just to follow on from what Tom was saying about what Leave should do this week, I think they've really got to nail this ongoing claim that the out campaigners cannot explain what out looks like. It is very, very lazy criticism, but quite an effective one of the out campaign that they can't come up with some kind of model. And it's very difficult for them to sort of prove a negative, but they need to start some kind of language which ridicules the suggestion that they can't come up with a comparable, you know, this is Norway or this is Switzerland or whatever. But do you know what I think they should do? And it's really quite simple. You need more Gove and less Boris. Michael Gove <laughs> made a really significant speech in the week in which he said the optimistic case is to leave the European Union because he was saying Britain could have a great future, he would argue, outside the European Union and the Remain people, they're pessimistic because they're saying we've got to be part of this club. That was, you know, a visionary argument from his point of view. What do you get from Boris Johnson? Snarky things, raising question marks about whether he was being racist, about the President of the United States. Because Boris Johnson, the problem with Boris Johnson, he's never really stop being a journalist and what do journalists do they always play the man they never play the ball because guess what we're after headlines mm. voters don't like that what voters like is optimism and sub optimism and substance but, uh, and that's what Michael Gove Tom, is I doing. think they've got a, also their, their big problem which again absolutely part of their strategy is not to spell out what leave looks like in any detail because they don't want to make the same mistake they think Alex Salmon did saying we'll still have the pound during the Scottish referendum you know Alex Salmon gave a detail they say well, if we give you no detail at all and just project you know visionary like stuff like Michael Gove did, no one could ever they come back on They us. do need to say and what it is. And the person who's done that best from their point of view is Michael Howard, who says it won't be the Norway de deal, it won't be the Swiss deal, it will be the British deal, yeah, that's the right. fifth largest economy Still in the world. Let floppy. me come on. It, it, it takes the President of the United States to put trade deals into the headlines. You don't often uh, get th that. And he said that if we weren't part of an EU deal of free trade with America, we would go to the back of the queue. Now, Tom, you, you think he's already stepped back a bit from, from that quite blunt statement. Uh, it, well, it was very interesting, the Hugh Edwards interview today, mm. which I personally found slightly hard to watch. It was very saccharine stuff, it really was. Ah, oh, but it got some good news lines out of it. I think I'd like where, to see you uh, up uh, in front of Barack uh, Obama. Well, there, we go, there, there we go. I, th I thought the issue that if, um, if we have a special relationship, why do we go to the back of the queue? That well, was a strong and, question. And Obama very, very pointedly didn't repeat that. Uh, I think mm. it was a mis, uh, misstep. It was a, uh, he misspoke. I was sitting during the press conference in the, in the Foreign Office, just one row behind the number 10 oh. officials there on Friday. Uh, when trade started coming up, you can see them shuffling, thinking, right, we know what he's going to say now. But when he said the back of the queue comment, uh, they turned around with, with, with some uh, incredible over excitement, saying, well, that, that's your intro, that's your line, that's what I write about, which made me think they didn't know that was coming either. Well, I wonder if it's all not just a bit of a paper tiger, because the fact is there is no deal between the EU and the USA. They started talks in 2013. They're meeting in New York uh, tomorrow for the 13th round. Uh, speaking to contacts in Washington, they say there is no prospect of any ratification of this deal by this Congress. We'll be lucky to get it signed before Mr. Obama steps down in January of 2017. And there are now protests growing everywhere. I think we've got some pictures. There were demonstrations in Germany yesterday against what's called TTIP. It's basically the North Atlantic, the European Union, US free trade area. There's a head of steam building up against it. It may not even happen, Isabel. Well, the hope of the Brexiteers will be that ultimately this comment by Barack Obama backfires because, as you say, where is this queue? And even if there were a queue, are we to really believe that America is so short of tremendous negotiators that there's a limited number of personnel available to actually make further deals. So I think it's a, an extremely thin argument. And additionally, we know that America sells us something like $56 billion worth of goods. Are we really to believe that they're going to somehow throw that to the wind? Well, even without free trade, we are the biggest investors in America and America are the biggest investors in Britain. A million people on each side of the Atlantic. Mm. A million Americans employed by British companies, a million Brits employed by American uh, companies here. But the US election campaign has become increasingly isolationist. Uh, not just Bernie Sanders, not just Donald Trump, or even Senator Cruz, but now Hillary Clinton has come out against the Pacific trade deal, which is ahead of the queue with the European one. 
and Congress after the election, I'd suggest, Nick, is likely to be more isolationist. Yes, and isn't the problem for Hillary Clinton that it was Clinton was that it was on her husband's watch that NAFTA was signed, North Atlantic, the North, North, America. North America Free Trade Agreement, and the argument is that all those jobs from Detroit and all that went south, went down to Mexico, and the Clinton brand has been very, very badly damaged by that, and she's always had to walk away from that. Uh, but I don't believe uh, Hillary Clinton as president uh, would be particularly isolationist. But I think this point about Barack Obama is that this queue may not exist, but what does exist is a concept, and the concept is the United States likes to do deals with regional blocs, not so keen on individual countries. And one of the big challenge for the Brexit people is that the European Union minus us is 450 million people, we are 63 million people. Where are we when the United States uh, is looking at us? How, how important are we? Uh, and to and that? there's no doubt that the, the Obama's impact here is, is going to be big for the single biggest reason that the, the Leave campaign is saying when we leave the EU, we will be able to replace any lost trade with the EU with our preferable trade uh, lack of tariffs there with greater trade deals with other countries the EU is stopping us from signing, such as America. When Obama says, oh, no, you won't, and then the Hillary Clinton says, well, I'll be in charge then, and you certainly won't, and I think that does have impact. If the isolation as mood continues to take control in America, uh, as, as I look at it, it is, both on the, uh, the Democratic left and the Republican right, it may become more and more difficult, not just for Britain, but anybody to do free trade deals with America now. Well, America just does what's in America's interest. And I thought perhaps the most significant thing about Barack Obama's remarks was just how unspecial our relationship with America is. If we don't do what they like, off to the back of the queue. And even Winston Churchill recognised that. Didn't he make a joke about us having to sell an electric chair to the United States um, to illustrate the horrors of the Lend-Lease Agreement at that you know, the great height of uh, our special relationship, it was all about uh, pounds, shillings and pence and us paying off the Lend-Lease arrangement. Well, as I say, as someone who follows trade talks, I'm grateful to the President for bringing it onto the front of the agenda. Uh, the doctor strike coming up this week for the developments meant to be pretty much an all-out strike, not the right word, but less cover than before. But, uh, uh, and, of course, it's only in England. But the Labour Party has come up with a suggested compromise. Uh, let's pilot it. Let's try out what you're saying. Yeah. How does the government... There we go. Labour steps in to halt Dr. Strike. People will think, hey, pilot's not a bad idea. Let's see if it works. How does the government handle that? I'd be very surprised indeed if, if Jeremy Hunt went for that. I think Jeremy Hunt would say, no, no, uh, I've offered you a deal. It's on the table. Uh, here it is. You must accept it. The, the BMA and the Labour Party, the truth matters, they don't really want this to go ahead on Tuesday. The second they start withdrawing doctors and people may start dying as because of it, they're in real trouble in terms of public support. Well, just common sense say, why didn't you pilot it first? Well, I think Jeremy Hunt has boxed himself into a corner on this, but for all the right reasons. He emphatically believes a seven-day service is needed. I, for what it's worth, entirely agree with him. I think the junior doctors have done themselves absolutely no favours by being as dogmatic about this as they have been. I don't think Mr Hunt's done himself many favours either. Well, Mr Hunt believes, crucially, that what he's doing is in the interests of patients, and I expect him to hold the line. I hope he does. And it's interesting that Theresa May was saying this morning in response to this, well, it is sort of being piloted, is it 20,000 doctors to begin with? But the bit of this Labour offer that I would have thought Jeremy Hunt would be really wary about is an independent inquiry into the mortality rates at the weekend because it's the figures that he's been using on that that have been so controversial. I'm not sure he'd want an independent forensic examination of that. Tom, do you agree with Isabel that actually if the strikes do go ahead, it starts to go the government's way? Completely. Absolutely. Which is why I think Jeremy Hunt now knows he, he just needs to sit and pretty and not worry too much about these sort of last-minute offers. Wait till tomorrow night. Tomorrow's going to be a fascinating day of politics. You know. mm -hmm. Come up to 11, 12 o'clock you know, on Monday night before the strike act begins. Which side really is going to blink? Because the idea we actually do go into total withdrawal of labour from doctors, from emergency wards, from A&E, whatever, uh, I mean, it, it really is something we've never done before in this country, and it could be quite, quite disastrous in terms of deaths. And that, the blame for that will fall squarely and almost 95%, I'd say, you know, on the, the shoulders of the doctors. We shall see. So we've marked this week as a, not a bad week for Remain. We shall see next week if it's a bad week or not a bad week for Remain or Leave. And we should mark it every week and see what happens. I've been